Hello, my name is Tyler Chen from Noon Frontier. On today's Valentine's Day special, we will be taking a look at graphing hearts with polar and Cartesian equations. Let's first take a look with our normal Cartesian coordinate system. Let's take the following equations. If we graph them on our Cartesian coordinate system, which specifies each point specifically by a pair of unique numerical coordinates, we can get the following heart graph. Now, the graph itself is a bit questionable. And while it is a heart, it does look a bit funky in some areas. Along with that, the heart is not a single equation, but rather two equations, which are pretty nasty. That being said, the heart still functions, pun intended. Now let's use the polar coordinate system, where each point on the polar plane is determined by a distance from a reference point and an angle from a reference direction. Let's take the following polar equation on the domain negative pi to pi. If we graph the equation on the polar coordinate system, it will look like this. A bit better in my opinion. The heart is more defined and we're able to create the heart with a single equation. But besides graphing hearts, what are some other differences between the use of polar and Cartesian coordinate systems? Well, the Cartesian X and Y system is very applicable in a lot of simple real life situations. For example, if you're trying to plan where to put different pieces of furniture in a room, the Cartesian system can be a useful aid of measurement. On the other hand, however, if you wanted to model the motion of an object in rotation, it could be better to think of things using polar coordinates. And while the situations in which you may want to use polar or Cartesian coordinate systems may vary, I can guarantee you one mathematical certainty. Using polar and Cartesian coordinate systems to draw hearts for your valentine won't win them over. Trust me, I learned the hard way. Well, that's all for now. Happy Valentine's Day.